Tatiana. Yes. You emerge from the mist, confronted by a familiar scene, but somehow still unusual. Like when you go through your your morning routine, if you do things out of order or brush your teeth with the wrong hand, it's a familiar experience yet alien. You're sure it's the land of Barovia. You see the beacon of Argon Volstolt still lit and shining brightly, but the sky is lacking that dull, gray, muted ambiance that you're familiar with, and you can actually see that dawn is on the horizon, and the sun will be rising soon. Incredible. I've been wanting to see a sunrise for so long. She takes a moment to just watch as the dawn spills over the land that she's never seen lit by its light. And you are correct, Tatiana. It is the first real sunrise you've seen since you originally left Koshmar. Even in the Feywild, you saw the sun, but the the intensity of just everything in the Feywild was almost overwhelming. But here, in the peace, in silence, there's a moment that you realize that just lingering, ambient dread of Barovia is gone. But you also don't know where your friends are. You're just standing on a road in the woods. I start walking. Can I see a direction that looks like it's the direction that more carriages are heading? I will say even from here, you see Argon Volstolt to the north. So, you know, Castle Ravenloft and the village of Barovia were to the south. You can even make out just the tip of the castle over the tree lines off in the distance. The last time... My friends are going to kill Strahd. And so I must go towards the castle, and I head that direction. As you're walking, Tatiana, your mind sort of goes back over the last few hours. You remember Voronika told you that she had something that she needed you to do. You remember a gust of wind and a feeling of warmth and then you don't remember anything until you're stepping out of the mist again time having clearly passed when am i going to have one day just one day where i wake up in a bed and i go to sleep in the same bed always being whisked away against my will it's very unfair Tatiana, as you're making your way down this road, you feel something, like something has been tucked inside of your vest. I reach in and pull it out. It is a black rose with particularly sharp thorns, just like the one that was once branded on you. It makes me angry to see it, and I try and crush it in between my muscular fingers. You, of course, crush the thing easily, although the thorns do fight back slightly, and you do feel the slightest trickle of blood coming down your fingers after you crumple it up. I toss it to the ground, and I lick the blood Hmm. and keep walking. Spicy as always, Tatiana. Mm, me... Incredible. Tastes like fierceness. Give me a survival check with advantage, if you would. Okay, digital roller, here we go. Ooh, 
Thank you for the advantage. That's a 16, not a one. Uh, as you are looking around here, Tatiana, last time you had a constant feeling that you were being watched by something, quite frankly, stalked more often than not. But wolves, crows, all manner of creature. You don't detect any of that except one particularly large crow sitting on a branch. I'll use bee speak. Are you what? from around here? Coco! Why else would I be here? You've never heard of a traveler coming from a distant land? Not voluntarily. Okay, well, you got me there. <laughs> Are you lost? It depends on one's definition of lost. Maybe I meant to not know where I was going. Ah, you're either a fool or a hero then, hmm? Yes. <laughs> well, I, I cannot deny that those are both. I'm not a fool. You see its feathers always. bristle slightly and it says, are you on your way to the funeral? You mean, Strahd is dead? Yes. Great heroes. Did battle with him in Castle Ravenloft. Count von Zarevich was slain, but so was one of their number. They are being honored in the village of Barovia. Oh. As soon as the sun rises. What do you mean slain? Because Brother Uriah could bring them back. Brother Uriah will bring them back. Whoever it was, he will bring them back. I don't know a brother Uriah, but life and death are not so easily traversed. You know, you just need a very big stone, like a valuable one, and he always has one. Who is this Uriah, and who would resurrect him if he were slain? Who would... Who would... Bird, I hope you are wrong. No. I am rarely wrong in matters of death. I only know faces, not names, and I have not looked upon this heroic corpse yet, but I intend to now. You should make haste, if that is your intent to do as well, and it lifts off and starts flying in the direction of the village of Barovia. Tatiana runs. Like, she could make some difference if she made up time that she could unkill one of her party. Do you shift she runs. into any sort of faster moving form? You know what? That makes a lot more sense. She's going to wild shape. Things don't always make sense when we're upset. <laughs> she does run for a while before she realizes four legs would be faster than two. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, and, and flying is faster than that. Let's mm -hmm. see. Uh, what should I wild shape into y'all? What should I wild shape? It's good to have um, options. Mm -hmm. You know what? I don't know, Dave. Let's just go bear. Bear feels right. Just when in doubt. Bear's bear. always right. Never go wrong yeah. with a bear. Yes. You wild shape into a bear and go crashing into the woods of Barovia, fearlessly, knowing that you should be more than capable of handling anything that you run into, because in this particular moment, time is more important than safety. And hello, welcome to the Black Dice Society, season two, episode 12, The Gloomy Shade of um, as always, thank you all for joining us. This is a Ravenloft stream. As such, it is a horror stream. 
Uh, you may encounter some circumstances, situations, and content that you don't normally encounter in a D and D stream. As always, I am aware of the cast and line and lines and veils. I just saw the list of shapes that she should well shape into going by. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Definitely helping. Um, we got to find a way to get you to turn into a winged bear. Just for the record, before this is over, uh, it can yes. be done. I'm aware of the cast uh, line and veils as always. We have our safety system in place. They have multiple ways to contact me if somebody gets squicked out. Um, and so if you ever see a scene shift dramatically or suddenly, it might be because somebody was uncomfortable. And of course, everybody being comfortable is the first and most important thing. Uh, before we go on, as always, want to thank our sponsors. Uh, thank you to Die Hard Dice. You can use code BDS to get 10% off of uh, any of the amazing things that they have there, up to and including the new Kyber set that uh, I, I was um, lucky enough to be able to debu uh, debut yesterday, as always, out here representing for the Sith, especially on today, the High Holy Day of Revenge of the Sith. Also Cinco de Mayo for anybody celebrating. No reason you can't celebrate both. Um, thank you to uh, Secret Labs, as always. You know I love mine. Links uh, coming up in chat there. We had a bunch of people talking this week about people that have invested in them and how much they like them and how much they enjoy them. So if you're thinking about upgrading your chair situation, Secret Labs. Um, also use our affiliate link. Uh, thank you to Warriors of Waterdeep. Thank you to Idle Champions. It is completely my fault that we do not have an updated code. I'm going to try to get us an updated Idle Champions code before uh, the, the session is over today. Uh, if not, I will tweet it out and make it up to y'all. Uh, as always, mm. You can get our museum quality uh, now um, vintage portrait now that uh, Brother Uriah is no longer with us. I don't know. You could get Rip. one and you could put that little like skull over his face uh, that Mark made. No, don't do that. Please do not sully Adam Schubert's magnificent art. But exclaim BDS art in the comments and a donation uh, portion of every uh, sale goes to world builders and help ending global hunger. Um uh, oh, yes. Also, we have a Patreon. If you want to know what happened to Brother Uriah after he crossed over and encountered the Raven Queen, portrayed magnificently by Nora here for us, uh, you can check that out in our Patreon right now. Unfortunately, there is a little snafu with my audio at the beginning of it. It's fine because Uriah and the Raven Queen are incredible until I realized I was having an audio snafu. And then you can hear me and then it goes where it goes. But if you want to know what was waiting for brother Uriah in the afterlife up now, patreon.com forward slash the black dice society. Now, before we dive completely into this, uh, who are you beautiful people and who are you playing starting with Nahara? Hello everyone, I'm Nora Ibrahim. You could find me everywhere at Neurological. My pronouns are she, her, as is my character Nahara, who is a reborn fallen Azamar undead warlock with a few levels of College of the Spirit Bard. Excellent. Returning champion Tatiana. Hello, I am Tatiana. Astoria, it's my last name. Uh, I am, uh, uh, Tatiana is a, uh, barbarian druid circle of the moon and um i'm becca scott at the becca scott or at good time society there you go thanks for being here thank you uh desmond oh hi i'm dj knight i play desmond a human ranger like him bro my pronouns are he him thank you for hanging out with us uh valentine oh hi Hello, there we go. I did successfully unmute it. I am Sage Ryan. I go by Not Sage or Pixel Circus everywhere on the internet. I realized I was just typing in chat from that account instead. Oops. Uh, and tonight I am playing Valentine. Valentine is a reborn aberrant mind sorcerer. And we both use she, her pronouns. And last but certainly not least, Finn. Hey, I'm Tanya DePass, uh, also known as Cypher Tier Online. Uh, I am Fen, your draw dump here, blood hunter with a little bit of warlock, or maybe not after last episode, who knows? Um, that That's a question we got to answer. And also very quickly, I want to say thank you to Regulus, sir, who I got to meet while I was in London, uh, who gave me a lovely dice bag with Fen on it. Excellent. Uh, award winning, award winning. Tanya to pass there. Hey. 
Hey. Hey. I, I guess I'm officially an icon. Hey. Literally, he's <laughs> just an icon living. Whoa! Literally, just objectively. Oh you know what I mean? Like it was said on the internet. It's true. Um, also, um, apparently, I'm being told we already got the Idol Champions code updated. Thank you to all the incredibly capable people behind the scenes. Uh, as always, my issue is I. Wait a second. I do this for the month, but I swear I did like an extra week this time and also forgot that I'd done the extra week. So for once, past Dave actually did his part. He's usually the source of my problems. For once, he tried to come through and it was I who dropped the ball. Thank you for you all who picked it up. So uh, with that all firmly in mind, let us get on with our show. And also with you. <laughs> okay, DJ, I see you. Y'all don't want to know what we're like when the uh, <laughs> intro video is playing. That's all I'm really saying. Don't. That's it. Really That's, don't. It. That's it. Count Strahd von Zarovich has been defeated. Nahara drove the Sunblade through his heart, and he collapsed into a pile of ashes in his casket in the depths of Castle Ravenloft. A great rumble went out as the castle shook and all of Barovia instantly knew that the Count was slain. Now some time has passed. You all have made it out of the castle back to the village of Barovia where people have come out of their homes looking up at the clear starry sky for the first time in any of their lives and here on the crest of daybreak just outside the church where you all faced off with Strahd von Zarovich the first time a small gathering is formed you see Arena and her brother Iskmark stand before you and they say I thank you so very much what you've done and I understand if you don't want to bury brother Uriah here in Barovia but please at least allow us to say some words over him to bless him to thank him and guide him on his way into the afterlife here in the the light of the rising sun and the, the eyes of the morning lord for the first time we just want to be able to say thank you I don't know what to say. Uh, it's definitely not my place, but um, people should say nice things about him, so sure. Let me ask you all, after he was struck dead in Strahd's throne room, how did you all carry him out of the castle? Desmond, as far as Desmond knows, he's still on his shoulder. Desmond has just picked him up and has carried him the whole time. Mm. 
Nahara was walking slightly behind and still holding his hand. I was walking in front as an honor guard. After the destruction of Strahd von Zarovich, most of his forces had been pulled out of the castle for the battle outside of Argen Volstholt. Many of the creatures ran screaming into the mist. Some of them just collapsed dead on the spot, no longer animated by his vile sorcery. The ambient undead that Brother Uriah told you were locked in some of these assorted houses in the village of Barovia also collapsed on the spot. And for the first time in centuries, possibly many centuries, there's peace. And you see Arena very slowly comes towards you, Nahara. And she looks at the second bite on the side of your neck and just extends a hand for you. Nahara reaches out for it. You saved us. I wish I could feel happier. <laughs> Truly you and everyone here deserves, deserves to celebrate, but forgive me, I cannot right now. She just kind of stands there and squeezes your hand a little bit and just nods slightly. Valentine is Mark very slowly slides up to you. Just ask very quietly. Did he die well? You know, I've I've seen a lot of death, and I don't know that well actually exists. But he did good for a lot of people, and in his book, one I'll never understand, I think that that's as well as it gets. And the Count, please tell me he died poorly. Weakly, sadly, desperate, and heartbroken. Everything he deserved. See, he slowly kind of surveys you all in the crowd. Again, you think probably everybody in the village of Barovia now is a couple hundred people all slowly emerging from their homes. Not everybody truly understanding what is happening, but being aware of the fact that something is happening. And Ismark leans in close, Valentine, very quietly says, Is there anything I can do for you? Not for me, no. Um, this is a terrible place, full of a lot of magic that kills people. He was our only magic that did the opposite. I, the only solace I could offer or attempt to offer, he deserves much better than. I have no interest in making him like me, but he can't be the only one in this whoever forsaken place that was able to help people, right? That could bring people back. In these lands, only von Zarevich was the master of life and death, and his idea at resurrection was the type that I feel neither Uriah or anyone else would embrace, as yeah, I believe never. you've seen. Can I, I thought that maybe the case. tell you something? I'm no great sorcerer, nor am I any sort of great warrior, though I've seen my fair share of battle. I had hoped it would be my sword that would end Von Zarevich, but I'm just as happy that it was someone else's. But one thing I do know is people. 
And Uriah was very fond of you. It was in his eyes when he looked at you. Not many are, so I appreciate that. He was the best of us, for certain. Tatiana, as you are making your way into the village of Barovia, when you enter into the outskirts of the town, at first, there's no one. But you very quickly pick up the scent of people, and you start to see this large gathering around the church, but you can't see anyone through the mass of bodies. Get out of my way! Get out of my way! I need to help him! I per burst through the people to the front. All of you see Tatiana explodes out of the crowd. Oh, I they don't, they just see a brown bear. <laughs> I would like to run to the bear. I know that, I would know that bear anywhere. And I would like to just kind of try and like grab onto her and pull her back towards the group a little bit. Tatiana, I you. turn back into Tatiana after I let out a rip roaring bear. I fade back into my humanoid version and I hug her back. Tatiana, it can't be true. It only takes mere seconds for you to survey your friends and familiar faces and see Desmond holding Brother Uriah's lifeless body. Wait, wait. Give him give him this. I want to try and feed him a good berry. Desmond, as she comes towards Uriah, how do you respond? It's Tatiana. So obviously she wanted to see doesn't kind of leans him down. Just kind of holds him in both his arms. Tatiana, you were there when the Raven Queen wiped Von Zarovich's mark off of his face. But as you look at him, he almost just looks like he's sleeping. I mean, there's signs of battle. But there's no visible wound on him that you could think would have caused his death. How did it happen? Oh, word. He said a word. Ryan dropped. It's been an instant. No. He just needs to taste this. They're really delicious. You'll like it, Uriah. You'll wake up and you'll say, wow, let's have a feast of just good berries. And I put it in his mouth. You put it in and close. You hear the squish of the berry and you even see a little bit of juice leak down the sides of his face. But he doesn't move. And when you realize when you touch his face, he is cold. He is gone. Nahara. Oh, Nahara, and I go to her and hold her. It's Tatiana. I'm sorry I wasn't there. I... Veronica, she <sighs> took me. I... She didn't even ask. I couldn't do anything to stop him. This can't be it. This cannot be it. We'll find a way. <sighs> I mean, Veronica, she's, al she's almost, you know, she died once and, and Valentine, she died. The, there are ways. Tatiana, I don't think that Brother Uriah would want to be like us. Maybe Ezra has a plan. You're right. Maybe. Maybe, but... Ezra, where's your plan? Ezra! Has she, has she, like, come by, or...? She wouldn't help us. But he did everything for Ezra. I mean, the horror Ezra. One of we know that, and she denied our request. I asked her. We all asked. There, it, it wasn't a straight denial. If... There but then we'll chance. kill her! Hey, uh, we'll, hey, we'll hey, give you a right. Tatiana. We, we still have a map. 
Well, I'm not done here. I, you all can keep talking about like how awesome Uriah was. I want to follow this map because I don't believe it. Uriah, but, uh, what kind of map is that? Tatiana, you when they say it, you can see on Uriah, it takes you a moment to realize it, but on his chest, drawn in his blood, it's a map of some sort. All right. It's time to act then. Not not to not to cry. Nahara, stop crying. Nahara. Exactly. You see Arena is still standing there holding um Nahara's hands, and you see tears coming down her face as well as she's looking at Brother Uriah. And she just says, Before you go. Would you all tell us about him? Would you all say some words about him? We'll make sure his story is told forever and he is never forgotten in these lands. And Finn, she I'm saying... She... Yes, Desmond, sorry. Desmond interrupts. He says, I'm saying nothing. As far as I'm concerned, he's just resting. You and see, then Desmond just walks off. Desmond, you see she actually puts a hand on your shoulder. Again, she's a 16-year-old girl, so you're significantly larger than her and she just says i understand but i would like to know what you saw in him even if you get to see him again i may never please for all of us say something desmond okay he was the nicest person you've ever met guaranteed once you were close, anything that you think you could need, if you were in ever any pain or any issue, you ever had issue with someone else, you would call upon Ezra to help you. With his, li with his last breath, he would happily do everything in his power to help you. And with that, I'm going to go so I can talk to him again. And Desmond walk starts walking away. Do you walk I'm going to actually put my hand on Desmond's shoulder. Yes. Let us give them something to remember him by, and then we should go follow the map. They you have didn't. Mind? It won't. And Fen pauses because she's having a hard time with this. You actually see Arena walks up and very slowly reaches out to take Finn's hand too, like giving you every opportunity to essentially pull away. And if you don't, she very slowly grasps your hand too. And I, uh, I, I let her grab my hand. Just Uriah was a good man, is a good man, not was. He is a good man. He was a beacon of light among us. And I didn't save him all those years ago to watch him go out like that. I'm not going to watch Norhara in such pain and ignore what we've been given in this map. But these people only know him as an agent of Ezra. We can give him a legacy among these folks before we leave. And I just turned to her. He was a vessel of goodness in a very dark world. And both Uriah and Desmond are men I'm honored to call brother of the heart, if not blood. You see, Irina sort of looks at you for a second. And she actually motions you come a little closer because she is about your size, Finn. But she motions okay. like, like, like she wants to say something to you. All right, I lean in. And she just says, you're so incredibly brave and strong. I know what I saw on the road. I know what that creature said to you and what you did. Uriah was brave and good, but so are you. 
I will do my best to live up to your strength. Uh, that, that gets to Fen more than the thought of never seeing Uriah open his eyes again. She actually hugs Arena. She very much squeezes you back. Like in that moment when a person is, uh, basically desperately longing for some affection, she absolutely squeezes you. And I stay there. I, I, I see what it is that she's looking for in that moment. Valentine, you see Ismark very much makes eye contact with you and kind of looks towards the crowd and then just looks back at you. I don't think I'm the one to say the nice things. I think that just makes it mean that much more from someone like you. Because you and I may not be the diplomats, but you still called him comrade and he still called you friend. And um, I think you might have thought of him the same way. You're right. And she'll just kind of like shuffle forward a little bit, kind of awkwardly, which you're not typically used to seeing Valentine look awkward or uncomfortable or lack of confidence. <sighs> Brother Uriah was um, good in a way that the colloquial use of the word good falls short of. Most of you have seen or been impacted in probably ways you don't even know in the care that he's taken in his time in Ravenloft. I have long been under the belief that good people don't end up in the mists. And um, Brother Uriah always felt like the exception. And maybe if nothing else, um, this is finally a reprieve from the unfair uh, lot that he survived. Maybe this is, um, maybe this is actually the door out of the mists. When you say that, this Mark just reaches in his belt and kind of pulls out a hip flask and kind of nods to you and then nods to Uriah. Just takes a long drag off of it. And he screws the lid on and he looks at you, Tatiana. And he says, I know it hurt missing the battle. I know you think you could have changed it. The gods will what they will. I think you know he wouldn't have wanted to switch places with you even if he could have. Can I say something? He very much like motions towards the crowd and you see they're all looking at you with like tears coming down their faces. I can't add more than what Finn and Valentine have said and what Desmond has said in the horror. It, it, it's just that he saw me and he knew how to conjure a feast that was so delicious. It would speak to everyone through their bellies. And, and he knew how to protect people and how when you find a barn of sick people and we all thought, no, we should probably leave them to die. He didn't leave them to die. He saved all of them, he made them better. And that's what he did, just as Valentine said. This place, it was, it was not for him. It was for worse people, people 
who loved killing, but he, he loved healing. And so that's why we will stop at nothing until we can bring him back. I refuse to give up, Desmond. Me too. I'm giving up nothing. I'm ready to go. You see, Marina finally comes to you, Nahara. And she just like very quietly whispers, can you say something? It's okay if you can't, but I would like to hear it from you most of all. I refuse to give up on Urias. He would never, ever refuse to give up on us. Uh, he, is the most selfless person I've ever met. <sighs> kind in a way that you would never even hope to see from someone. <sighs> Braver than he ever even believed himself to be, but <sighs> he was so brave. And I loved him more than life itself. I still love him more than life itself. He would do anything to help anyone. For no reward in return, nor praise. Because it was just in his nature. I could live a thousand lives and never hope to be as kind and as good as he was. I just wish I could have done something to stop it. You see, Arena just reaches out and hugs you. And she says, I don't know what we are. I don't know why I have your face. <laughs> I, I don't understand any of this. But I think you're every bit as much my sister as Ismark is my brother. And you were not meant to fall. And if there's anyone who can bring him back, it is you and your friends. I will do everything I can in existence. I will never, never give up on him. Nahara, you feel a warmth from the sun blade. You realize it communicates, but not in words, but in feelings. It is almost like it's trying to comfort you too. I, it's so strange, but as I look down onto the blade and feel this, I don't know how to reciprocate that, uh, uh, that feeling of gratitude, but I, I try to. You see, um, Ismark turns his head like he's looking at something, and he says, I think we have something that might be of some use to you all, but I understand if you don't want it. Any kind of motions. And you see from down the road, a carriage being pulled by two very beautiful horses, recently liberated from Castle Ravenloft, slowly comes riding in your direction, and Nahara, you recognize it instantly as the carriage from your visions. He just says, I thought I don't know how far you all have to travel and you don't want to just carry your friend around like 
He just sort of motions at Uriah's limp body. It's like, if, if you wish to take it, we understand. And if not, of course, we also understand. Can we make it nice for him in there? As the cartridge pulls up and the door is open, like so many things that you experience in Castle Ravenloft, it would have been resplendent once. It would have been one of the, the finest car carriages you could imagine, but it is old. The paint is faded. The mahogany is still solid. The once luxurious silk pillows are faded and stiff inside. I cast Entangle as weeds and vines sprout up from the earth and go into the cart and make a bed of leafy pillow to rest him on. It's concentration, but we'll ignore that. Look cool. Yes, you see the vines and even some flowers grow up uh, inside, giving you a safe place to put Uriah in and to be able to ride in yourselves as well if you so decided I need to walk it out I'll be outside the carriage you see as you sort of start to walk a little bit you see Ismark kind of looks at all of you and he says Friends, I hope you understand this in the manner in which I'm about to speak it. Although you will always be welcome here. He draws his sword and just salutes across his chest. He says, I hope I never see any of you ever again. Thank you. You've been extremely kind to all of us. It's been very unlikely to meet such a friendly face here. He just resheaths the sword and says, Blessings of the Dawn Father upon all of you. And you see the sun coming up from behind Castle Ravenloft for the first time, bathing the village in light. You see the people even very much squint and have to rub their eyes a little bit. Not at all used to it, but they kind of very slowly just start to allow it to kind of shine on them. Oh, careful. You're going to want to you not stay out too long. Small doses at first. And um, is Mark? Yes. She pops a kiss on his cheek and walks away really fast. <laughs> See, he just sort of winks at you as you do. And as you, uh, who is going to drive the cart at least? Doesn't I would move. like, to, no, I would like to stay with Uriah. Inside? I'd I'll like drive. Tatiana. Perfect. As you all get in and start riding out, you all see the villagers waving their goodbyes. You see they're an alternative mix of, of tearful for Uriah's sacrifice, but also grateful to you all, your sacrifice, and having liberated them as they stand here and breathe the free air for the first time in their lives. And you all find yourself riding, walking down the road back in the direction of the Black Gates in Nahara. Give me a perception check with advantage or Arcana if that's higher, but I think perception's going to be it. To be clear, I know Finn is outside the carriage. Tatiana, is anybody besides Nahara riding inside with Uriah? Just you. Just you're welcome. Okay. I'm I'm uh sharing the driving with Desmond. Perfect. Uh I did an Arcana check and that's a twenty-four. Nahara is, how are you riding with him? Are you sitting there 
in the seat looking at him? Are you next to him? Are you cradling his head? Like, um, I'm very much sitting down and I have uh, cradling his head, yes, and just can't take my eyes off of him. While you're sort of sitting there, Nahara, you realize um, the map starts to change. Like, as you all are moving, the map is moving. It definitely is pointing you towards the black gates, but it is, like, adjusting in real time on him. So there is... This is a sign. You have to be all right. You just have to be all right. Um, Is there something that I recognize... Um, do I, can I recognize anything about this map at all? It's clearly taking you towards the Black Gates, at least. It's taking you out of Barovia. But because it's changing, it's, I guess, limited in its destination. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Um, seeing this and feeling like it's, some glimmer of hope, I would like to draw a card from the Taroka deck to see. Um, I just need a sign. I need a sign from Ezra. If there's any possibility that he'll be all right. Do you seek answer? You're still here? I am always with you, my dear. Am I not your patron? Where were you? Where were you? How could you not stop him? When von Zarevich, I will not say lived, when he existed, He could be quite troublesome in blocking outside influences on Barovia. I did what I was able. I bought Uriah time with a very powerful spell. A pity he was not able to use it more to his advantage. But you, my dear, You have triumphed. I have done what you've asked of me. Indeed. But you promised me, Uriah. Perhaps there is something that could be done. Tell me, and I'll do it. I could perhaps return him. Though I do not think you would like the form he took. What he would become. What do you mean? Think on it. Turn to those you know can offer assistance. Me. For does not your power flow from me? But what can I do? Turn away from this map. My assistance is a sure thing, no. Can I insight check that? (laughs) We'll say it, you can. Uh, I, I will uh, roll for Aslan's deception, which is not insignificant. But what I will say, you feel the Sunblade is very much radiating hesitation and doubt. I see. Well, that is all I need. I, I would say you've dealt now enough with Aslan. 
he's inscrutable. You have your instincts, but to whether or not you can read if he is going left or right or leading you <laughs> truly or falsely, he's impossible to read. Even given every, everything that he's said, because I believe in Uriah's goodness, I must follow this map. And I don't say this out loud, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to still draw that card. Absolutely. Um, would you like to tell me when to stop? Uh, someone else. Someone else. So I can't. I can't in any way stop. affect the outcome. Rogue. Perfect. Let's see. Uh, it is uh, detachment from the material and person, uh, detachment from the material and the personal in indifference. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, he certainly is detached from the material, so, <laughs> but doesn't quite answer my questions. Uh, I sense doubt, my dear. And? Perhaps you need time to consider, but of course I am always your benevolent patron. My sorrows for your loss. Do not speak to me of my loss. And with that, you don't feel him anymore, Nahara. Not his active presence. Thank goodness. You all make your way down the road and Barovia seems like a different place. The sun rises high in the sky in what would be a still chilly but lovely day in most places. Fall in Koshmar, for those of you who remember such a thing. Even you, Finn, although you're from the Underdark, you've traveled far and wide with the carnival, including times outside the mists. It seems the overarching domination of Strahd von Zarevich is lifted off of this land. It's too bright and sunny. Actually, Finn, as you are riding there with Desmond, you do notice he's been... You two are up there driving the cart and Tatiana and Valentine are walking nearby. He has been very quiet since you left the village. Nudge Desmond. Yeah. I mean, you're you're not someone who wastes words, but you've been quiet even for you. It's in this cart. Out of yeah. Life. And because we did what we came to do. Yeah. Until we get to where this map takes us. So not a lot to be said, really. People asking us to speak on it as if he's completely gone. I refuse to believe that he is. Well, to them, he is. That's fair. We know we have this map and we're on our way. Yeah. But as of right now, even though I believe this map is going to take us to where we need to be to have him back, he's still not with us. He's with us, but he's not with us, if that makes sense. You don't sense his spirit. I'm horrible at sensing spirits. I can't hear him laughing. I can't hear him nuzzling up with Nahara. I can't hear him talking about brisket. Oh, Desmond, 
would you like to see more about this lovely recipe? And that sort of thing is the kind of conversation I would expect to be having with Brother Uriah right now. And since I am not, and since he is not here to have that conversation with, not a lot to say. Well, you know I'm not good at feelings, but him not being able to speak does not mean that he's not here with us. You and I both know, and the people we travel with know, death doesn't have to be permanent. I'm halfway there myself. I'm just trying not to be too much of anything until he's with us again. Because mm. it feels awful familiar to me. What does? Someone who's been with us all along. All of a sudden not. True. It's a little harder for me. Just, yeah. Just a little bit. I, uh, you know, laws won't upend the cart. I just put my shoulder on Desmond's, or my hand on Desmond's shoulder and just give him a, a friendly pat. I, I get what you mean. But remember, there's still the rest of us that are present that need you. I'm still here. I appreciate that. And I will be here after we get to where this map's going. That's just, I'm not the best with the feelings either. And when I have them, I feel I am best served with some sort of action. That's what kept me busy with the brisket. Speaking of, and he just like digs in his pocket and then just pulls out. You know what, Desmond, as you <laughs> dig around, yeah, fresh out. I was going to give you the custom blend that I gave you before, and would you yeah. believe, wouldn't you believe it? I, I'm fresh out. I, uh, yeah. I can't even do that right. Desmond, <laughs> you know when I said that you're the brother of my heart, I meant that with everything I had, right? I didn't say anything, but I believe the same for you and me and my sister. So... You can trust that I mean that with my heart. Mine's just Wait. a little torn yeah. at the moment. Yeah. And I, I actually slipped my arm through his while we're riding along. As someone who claims you in such a way, you know you can talk about Armand with me. Whatever you say to me is between us. I actually don't know what to say about Armand right now because Armand was unaware of Veronica. Mm. And when he was made aware that Veronica was still in existence, he went from wanting to battle me to getting out of the way and letting us leave. So... I missed my brother. I dreamed that I'd found him and he killed me in that dream. Then I found him. He wanted to kill me. And the one thing, the one thing, the one person we shared love for was the reason that he backed off. So he's still in there. Whatever Armand is now, he's still Armand in there. And that's good enough for me for now. Well, I hope we can find him and that your third meeting doesn't result in him trying to kill you. Yeah. If he does, it'll be of the fables. You know how the fables, like there's vampires, werewolves, like they're... they're now that we know them and are them, it's 
it'll be what it is. Now, it's only fair that since you asked me about Mond that I ask you and mention to you that you can also tell me anything you like. Body sold. I know that sigh. Do you? I just gave you one of those. Like, I understand that. Not with not the best with feelings, but I see him. Yeah. I fear her wrath. Should we find the carnival again? I took Nepenthe under the cover of night away from her, and I've stolen her revenge. Should she get her hands around my neck? Mine may be the next funeral you all speak at. I understand that. Having said that, though, um, I imagine of all the people that you know, all the people at the carnival, all the people that have come and gone, if there's anyone who could steal Nepenthe and steal her revenge and live, we both know that's you. But will it be the same? Imagine if this were you and Veronica or you and Armand and you did the same thing that you could walk back up to them and it would be the same. It wouldn't. I know it wouldn't. I, before I made the action, I would know that it wouldn't. And I feel like you knew that it wouldn't. But it needed to happen, so you did it anyway. Yeah. Which, of all people, I completely understand that. Yeah. Which so leads me to imagine that his old does as well. We can hope, and if we wind it back at the carnival, we'll see. But for now, I've got a evil sword that has actually been given what it wanted was Trod's death and the caller's death. And I may be a very unlucky half vampire, as it were. Meanwhile, outside is Tatiana and Valentine are making their way down the road. Um, you two notice the same things, but in very different ways. Again, Tatiana, you realize the land seems like it's able to breathe again. The tall, knotty trees are still largely barren of leaves. It's been mere hours since Count von Zarevich was destroyed, and yet you can feel the difference. You hear songbirds for the first time, and Valentine, you, again, having an intrinsic sense of the presence of death, because you are never that far removed from it yourself, also feel like his boot is off the neck of this place. It is free. It's a strange feeling. I feel horrible and in pain, and at the same time, I too can feel the gift that you all gave to this land. You should be proud. And I'm ashamed once again when the battle was most important. I wasn't there. Tatiana. You are the most fearsome fighter I'll ever know. I know, but that's no good if I'm not and there. There is nothing anyone could have done. I promise. I understand the feelings that you have, and I know the feelings you have about not being there in the past and This was 
absolutely undeniably unstoppable. When all of us are together, it feels like we're unstoppable. It feels impossible this could have happened. We have defeated so much together. Why is this one stupid vampire enough to take out such a powerful being as Brother Uriah, one smiled on by beings from all different lands? Because he saved this place. Maybe nothing can be won without consequence. And that's why the gods let this happen. But you know what? The gods are wrong sometimes. Or maybe, or maybe they were right, Tatiana. Tatiana stops walking. What did you just say? I miss him greatly and I am deeply tired of loss. Okay, so we stop it. It already happened. So we change it, we undo it. Tatiana, whatever, maybe, maybe we undo it, right? Maybe that's an option and maybe there is because we have done things that seem equally impossible. But after what happened to me and after what happened to Veronica, I'm not sure I'm of the belief anymore that the second chances are the better option. What are you talking about? There's only moving forward and you can only move forward if sometimes you undo something that happened backwards. Look at you, you are growing, you are changing. Sure, you're kind of undead, but you still help people. You become a better version of yourself every day. And Uriah, he can only get better. If it means bringing Brother Uriah back like me, it's not up to me, but I don't think he would want to be like me. And oh, boo hoo. I'm a mess because I have a big cut on my neck and, and uh, there's a God brain that controls my whatever. I don't even understand how that works. Exactly, Tatiana. You don't understand. All I know is I have my friend. And you are my family too. Because and I don't know what I, I do without you. And what is Nahara to do without him? If we can give him back to her, we have to do that. What if he's a puppet? What if he comes back as something other than himself? Or what if we bring him back and he is different and it tarnishes everything everyone knew about him and loved about him? He's a, some sort of clone of Aslan Rex. What if he comes back worse and different? Then we kill him. Or maybe we just accept that he always could be puppeted by Aslan Rex and we loved him anyways. I'm not interested in having to kill a friend. I don't have very many. And I'm not saying that I'm right, which is rare. I usually think I am. But I'm saying that being so quick to jump to a second life, being the better option, has been proven time and time again to not always be the case. I have a lot of regrets about Veronica and how that went. And I never asked to be here and none of us did and i am grateful to be with you and heartbroken that you get to spend all of this time stuck with this version of me i am heartbroken every day that nobody knows what i was like before all of this and i am so grateful that you put up with this version of me and so appreciative, but I 
don't wish that burden upon friends. That's all. Can I be honest? Yes, I'll be honest. I think I like this version better. You can make tentacles come out of your eyes. You definitely couldn't do that when you were running through flower fields with your mother. You're right. May she rest. I could not. So I think she'd be proud of you. I think they both would. And I think that they'd tell you, you didn't get to be born the first time and you don't get to choose whether you're born the second time either. And Uriah, he liked life so much. Yeah, he had the thing against undead when we first met, but he got over that. The irony of it. Maybe he'd think it's funny. I think she'd be proud of you too, Tatiana. And I'm very proud of you. We'll see what the options are ahead of us. Who knows? You don't think she'd be mad you just gave away her name? No. She would be so... Proud of you earning it more than any of us. You know how much that means to me. <laughs> it's stupid. And I pick you up and squeeze you and lift you off the ground. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. No, it's okay. We should catch up with the carriage. As people are falling off, I need you to know that I love you before any of that happens again. Okay. Okay. That's all. I love you too. As you all make your way through here, it's it's unusual. It is almost like the land before is strawed so passionately declared, I am the land. It's like Barovia itself expanded and contracted to stymie and obfuscate you and delay you and harry you at every turn and the trip back to the black gates is much faster than you recall it is barely mid-morning before they come into view and they stand wide open and on the other side of them you do not see a dense mist you just see a different woods Nahara, you should probably look out here. As I hear that, I take a look out the window. You see, as described, it's uh, Desmond and Tatiana. It's woods neither of you recognize. It is not the thick density of Barovia. It is not the scraggly pines of Falcovnia. It's somewhere else just woods and this is where the man told us to go whatever mm -hmm. this place is we're headed in the right direction how do we the know the map didn't look that big I... the map is changing as we move any of that you makes that makes sense any of you that look at the map again you had plenty of opportunities to see it before it is different than what it was last time and you can see the gates the black gates marked on it, and the path goes through them out into the woods. Also, oh, then we are not at our destination. Then it, the map is telling us to go through these gates. So we're here. It's, it's time to go. At least that's how, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, it, we're not where we need to be yet. We're closer than we were when we started. But mm. wait a minute. The dark lord of this land is dead. And now the mists are gone. Can we even get back to the carnival if we tried? No, oh, without the mists being here. Nahara, you can walk in the mist. Do you have a sense of feeling? I know as much as you. I can try, but I don't think I'll be successful. If we can't get through the mists, then who is going to speak to Hildy? I'm 
I don't know. How could we begin to tell a child the things that we've seen? What has happened to Brother Uriah? I can't. No. Hildy is not a child. She was raised in Falkovnia. This is true. Just because she was raised in hell doesn't mean she deserves to be treated like an adult. She deserves a reprieve. I didn't say treat her like an adult. And I merely offer to speak to her, depending on what happens with Brother Uriah. I know she's a child in body, if not in how she was raised. I feel like Hildy came to all of us and was confident in picking up a sword, picking up a slingshot she wanted to fight because that's the land she grew up in. How many people has she lost before she ever met us? We'll never know. But until we get to where this map is telling us to go, I'm not having this conversation. And I'm just going to keep... And, and Desmond just focuses and keeps pushing yep. the carriage on. You track the reins and the horses begin moving forward out into the woods. It's hours but uneventful hours the land is uneven but the cart makes decent work of it these destrier horses are very well trained you see life begins coming back into the woods the leaves grow thick and full you see Squirrels and birds and um, all manner of woodland creatures here. It's strange that it, the deeper you go into the woods, although you don't lay eyes on the mist, the ambient oppression of the reality of being in the dread domains does begin to set back in on each of you until Nahara you finally see on the map that is changing comes upon a very large tree and when it rotates into position the tree just stops and the map goes no further and soon after that as you are driving the cart forward, you do see an incredibly large tree standing in the clearing that dominates everything else. We, ha we have to stop. H Hello? Everyone. Stop the carriage. This All right, that's when it stops. This tree, this tree right here. The map stops. Just looks like here. a big tree to me. It's not, it can't be just a tree. Can I do an arcana check on the tree? The you... tree itself is not familiar to you, but the door in its side certainly is. It's a door you've gazed on before. It opens. And the man who greets you stares at you with Uriah's face, slightly older. The archmage Firan Zalhonen takes a draw on a pipe and waves. Ah, my friends, I bid you welcome. I have been expecting you. And that is an excellent place for us to take a little break. So we'll do a quick 10 here. Be right back. Don't go anywhere.
you all make your way inside this large tree, having been confronted with this very unexpected face. And when they enter into Ferran Zalhonen's personal sanctum, what does it look like? The layout is completely different than it was before. You see the room just off the door has been set as though for a funerary feast. Black cloth is draped over several mirrors and paintings. And Ferran Zalhonen takes his accustomed seat at the head of the table. You do note that standing at his right hand is a large figure made of wood and steel, its face shaped like a visored helm. Now then, please sit and refresh yourselves. I am very sorry for your recent loss, but when last we met, you all performed a service for me. And I am most grateful. You also enumerated certain terms, and I wish to fulfill them now, if I may. I'd like to send a telepathic message to Nahara. Let's go. Is it going to hurt your feelings if we try to kill someone with your boyfriend's face? Uh, I think I have detached this character from Uriah. So yes, no, go ahead. Excellent. And then I'll just pass that on to Tatiana. <laughs> no, that's not what my boyfriend's face looked like. <laughs> Tatiana, please. <laughs> also, what does your boyfriend look like? This isn't a conversation for another time. <laughs> Uh, well, one time in the carnival, he's not my boyfriend. Uh, we can talk about it later. Later. Right. Um, hello. What the hell? You decide to show up after the fact. Do you think maybe now is the time to offer a favor after? You couldn't have maybe stepped in a little earlier, Mr. All-Knowing? Mm. Well, I have been scrying you, I will admit, and keeping track of your progress, but... Even the powers of an archmage have their limits, especially when one is dealing with an entity such as Strad von Zarovich on his home territory. Well, if we could do it, I'm sure we certainly could have used your help a little earlier. Indeed. And why call us now? I did not call you. I was merely expecting you. I think you were led here by someone else entirely. And who would that be? Oh, perhaps a power you've recently had dealings with. You did call out to her, did you not? And she offered what assistance she could. That is to say, she led you here to me. Yes, why? Because I may be able to help you. What's your price? Hmm. Well, as of right now, I am in your debt. As mentioned, you did enumerate certain terms. And I would see them all fulfilled, including what Uriah asked of me. He wanted me to tell him about myself. And so I will tell all of you. But we'll leave that for last. For now, the things I owe you. Nahara, yours was the simplest request of all, and I am sorry that it comes when you have no one who can utilize its power. But a black diamond. This of greater facets and more value than what I gave you before. It is unfortunate that Uriah fell. Would you believe me if I told you that our dear Uriah was perhaps one of the more powerful priests of good in these benighted lands? I can oh, certainly you... believe that. Yes. Yes, so returning him to you through I hesitate to call them conventional means, does not seem to currently be an option. 
But as I say, I may be able to help. I don't believe you. Your needs and mine may dovetail here. I do not pretend that I am self-interested, but I think I can help you while also helping myself. Perhaps more will be clear when I've explained. But for now, Valentine. Yes? You asked me for access to the Feywild. This. Yeah. This scrap of cloth, not much to look at. But would you believe it once adorned a cloak? A cloak worn by an old acquaintance of mine. I believe you knew her as a Bilna, but she had many names. I knew her best as Tasha. I must say, I much preferred her in that aspect. Wonderful sense of humor. But this, if anything, will prove a guide through the mists to the Feywild. And she doesn't say anything. She just stares right at him. Does she accept it? She'll take it. You come with a lot of nice little trinkets. Merely what you asked for and what I owe you. If you've been stalking, I'm sorry, scrying us for all of this time, why did you feel like now you should fulfill what you owe? Oh, I've been working at gathering these things I owe you for quite some time. You made some rather unusual requests, which brings us to our next item. A galactic unicorn, I believe, was what was asked for. And believe me, I labored long finding something that would fit the bill. But this, and he holds forth what looks like an equine tooth. This, it shimmers in the colors of the rainbow, but it also has a darker hue to its bottom, a galactic sky studded with stars. This may be planted in the ground. One of the teeth of Dalvernar. Be wise in its use, Desmond. It can be called but once. By me. It will come when you call. And it will aid you. And why give this to me? You were the one who asked for it. Don't you recall our business with Mordecai Grimhallow and the Dullahan, uh, the headless horseman, if you prefer? It was ages ago, sweet mercy. Yes, yes, quite a while. I uh, plucked you all from the Witchlight Carnival. And uh, I do understand, through my sources, that congratulations are in order, Your Majesty. It's a pleasure. Now then, ah, does, yes. Does Desmond accept the tooth? Again, to be clear, you have to plant it in the ground and it will sprout into a galactic unicorn. But do you accept it? I mean, it's a unicorn, obviously doesn't accept it. So that's, <laughs> is that really a question like? Y you know what, Desmond, actually give me either performance or deception, whichever is higher. Perfect. I'm here for this entire concept. They're tied, so I'm going to go performance. Okay. That'll be an 18. You, you managed to keep keep the stone face, Desmond. You, you keep the squee internal as, oh. as, as you were gifted the galactic unicorn. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I was expecting a bit more of a reaction, but, uh, well... That's fine. It's, uh, that's fine. It means a lot to me. I'll, that's about as much reaction as I can give. Now, what what does a galactic unicorn do? Oh, it's like a unicorn, but more galactic. You'll understand when you see it. Um, Tatiana. Spelljammer confirmed. <laughs> T 
Satyana, you specifically requested a steed uh, of a fearsome and undead nature, yes? I didn't know you were actually going to give us anything. <laughs> oh, yes, I do keep my bargains. You may be assured of that. This, he gives you a small figurine of a skeletal horse. Oh. oh Is it too uh, late to ask for bigger? Oh, uh, this is merely what you use to call it. I should have, because the other one got it. Hmm. And finally. But that's it that you're not going to tell me it's cool and galactic oh, it's or cool. anything? Oh, it's cool. Well, you said an undead skeletal steed, and, and this is, here it is. I mean, really, it's, it's what's, what's on the tin, as they say. Okay. Hmm. I like mine. Mine's my favorite. Thank you. And finally, uh, perhaps the most challenging request of all, Fen. Yes. You asked me to free your lover, Isolde, from the grips of her blade, Nepenthe. The sword on her back immediately begins to rattle. And wonder of wonders, you have it here with you. Mm, not so much a wonder, but yes. Fascinating. I wouldn't have thought it possible, and this could change things. What are you thinking? As I told you when last we met, I would offer you my assistance, but I could offer no guarantee of success. And so, my assistance you have. I'll need to try with both Nepenthe and Isolde present, but when the time comes, you will have what assistance I can offer. Again, even my powers have their limits. Ben, you've kind of gotten used to the ambient noise and rage of Nepenthe in the background, although again, he'd been strangely quiet since the death of the caller and even more so since the death of Strahd von Zarevich. But it comes roaring back into your consciousness. No, no, do not trust this charlatan. Have his head off now. I, I ignore Nepenthe's yelling in my head and just tap the scabbard to calm it. I would like to send a message to Fen. Fen. Yes? Be very careful of this man. I, I kind of figured. It's not just that. Uriah what? had told me that he had sent the caller to kill him. Ferran sent the caller to kill Uriah. And I've killed the caller. I know, but this is not a man to be trusted. Oh, I trust no one. I never doubt you. And but he thinks he's going to get both his souls and Nepenthe within arm's reach. He's very foolish. I don't know what he wants, what he truly wants. He probably wants to pan for himself and to control his soul himself. He'll get neither. Good. But I won't take his head unless he fails to bring us Uriah back. If he tricks us with that, then Nepenthe will get its blood. That seems right. Now then, as I mentioned, I think I might be able to help. But first, Uriah's price, what he asked of me, to tell you about myself. I did not really lie when I called myself Uriah's uncle, for in a sense, he is the son of Azalin Rex, and again, in a sense, 
I am Aslan's brother. <gasps> mm, you may spare your gasps. Okay, it seemed like you wanted us to gasp or something. No, mm. I suspect the relationship between us is somewhat evident. I'm going to reach out and do a low five to Tatiana. <laughs> but as I told Uriah himself, I'm not the same sort of thing that he is. Cards on the table, then. Aslan Rex came to these lands centuries ago. He dwelt in Barovia. And then he was granted his own domain, the lands of Darkon. Before that, he ruled as a wizard king in another land, another realm entirely. I, I am what he was before he was a Dark Lord, before he set his feet upon the path to lichdom, even before he was a king. I am Firan Zalhonen, and Firan Zalhonen became Aslan Rex. But I was split off from him. By the same means through which I think Uriah might be returned. You are familiar with a device known only as the apparatus, I think. Yes, we are. Some of us more than others. <clears throat> Indeed. Though the specific models you yourselves have seen before, they will not be what we require. Several devices have, over the many, many years, have been constructed from those same blueprints. The apparatus I speak of lies in the domain of Lamordia. I would like to get very, very, very close up to his face and just say, you don't need to explain the apparatus to me. And as she tends to do, she'll unclick her pearls in the back and she'll tuck them into a pocket. Yes, Valentine, I am aware. And at what cost do you think that people come back through that contraption? It all depends, both on the specific apparatus we speak of and how it is operated. I myself believe that I have the knowledge required to bring Uriah back as he was. But I will say at the outset, many things can go wrong. It is a most delicate procedure, and there is the possibility of catastrophic failure. And what in this fog-ridden hell makes you believe that? Many years ago, Azalyn himself employed the apparatus on Griffin Hill. The events of that time are lost to the mists. But it is when I was cleaved from his being. He was not always as he was. When I look at him now, in a sense, I pity him. But I will also stand against all of his machinations. And I have. I've assisted Van Richten and his followers many times. I've saved people and I have stymied his plans where I may.
Fen. Yes. I said I was in your debt and I meant it. For many years ago, you kept me from making a terrible mistake. You? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. I believe it was you that set the collar upon Uriah. I wondered if she'd told you. Hmm. Yes. I set the collar upon all the clones of Aslan Rex. I set them to death because I did not know what he had planned for them and I did not think it could be good. The others were eliminated, but Uriah survived. And I think you know that's when I came into his life. That's when I started observing him. Like an insect. Mm. More like a potential viper. I still did not know what Aslan's plans were for him. For all I knew, he was a phylactery. No. A phylactery? Hmm. A lich, you see, keeps a piece of their soul within an object most often. Keeps it safe, so even if their physical form is destroyed, they may reconstitute themselves. Right, I read that book. Hmm. And, for a long time, I thought that must be the purpose of Aslan's clones. But they each seem to have had their own unique role. Uriah's, you most recently discovered. So you want to save Uriah just to set him loose as a viper in a nest? Or do you want to save him because we miss him? You mistake me. I want to save Uriah because I wronged him. I want to save him for the same reason that I've looked out for him all these years, that I've offered assistance where I can. And yes, I want to save him to stymie Aslan Rex. If he has bring him back, will he be untethered by Aslan? That, I do not know. It is theoretically possible that death might sever the connection between the two of them. And if we bring him back via the apparatus rather than clerical means, it is possible that the bond would remain broken. Ferran has nothing to lose if he comes back wrong, worse, different. I... You'll feel like you got to check the box on your good guy card and you made your best attempt at bringing him back because you owed him, right? If he comes back and he's some kind of nightmare creature and one of us has to put him down after and you still get to say that you tried, what do you have to lose if he comes back like that? Valentine. What, what if he comes back normally to all of us and he spends the rest of his now undead life pretending like he's the person that died? Staying awake through nightmares every night because you can't sleep when you're like us. Not getting to enjoy any of the simple joys of being alive. It doesn't feel the same. It isn't the same. This isn't just a fancy decorative scar. We do not get another chance without paying a price. Valentine. That apparatus was only made to give control to those who wish to take it from us. Valentine. Valentine, I didn't know you were in so much pain. I'm shouldn't sorry. it be, shouldn't it be Uriah's choice if we can bring him back enough to even ask? How do exactly. we give him a choice? Nahara, were you given a choice? We can I can speak. tell you that coming back in this form was the greatest gift because I loved him. And so I will do whatever it takes to bring him back. 
No, you weren't given a choice, and neither was I. I don't care. I do. And I don't care about a lot of things anymore. Your pain is not, does not affect your decision on somebody else's life. It does. Of course it does. If I can speak from experience to the pain I don't wish upon him, it does affect it. You don't know that. You cannot be certain. No, but neither can you. I am willing to risk it. You're willing to risk him suffering? I will not give up on him, ever. I don't care what you say. I don't care what your experience was. Your experience is not everyone else's experience. No, but I have a unique insight to what that contraption does to people. The apparatus is not natural. It's not clerical, as you said. I believe that there could be some kind of magical means that brings Brother Uriah back. I believe that. I do. Well, whether it's by apparatus or not, I am still going to try to find a way. All right, let me ask a question. Cool. For a, how long do we have before ev the apparatus or magical means are no longer viable? I'm no paladin or cleric to know. Ah, yes. Uh, perhaps we should attend to that. Uh, do you have Uriah with you? He's in the carriage. Ah, uh, yes. Um, Stephen, and he motions to the shield guardian. Could you fetch him, please? Because... Both Valentine brings up valid points. Indeed. But if there is a way to rouse him even partially and ask, or ask through the Raven Queen, hmm. I still believe it should be his choice. And if he can't consent and is brought back and is himself and does not want to live an unlife, that would be his choice. I, as someone in one foot in both worlds, can understand not wanting to be either. Nahara. When this armored hulking figure goes over and opens the door, the moment the seal to this sanctum is broken, you clearly hear in your head a voice you've not heard for some time, Nahara. Granny's voice echoes in your mind. If you wish to know what he thinks, young one, simply ask him. The death can speak if you know how to listen. In... As he walks back in with Uriah and the door shuts behind him, you feel like she's gone. Firan reaches into his robes and pulls forth a small pouch of dust, which he sprinkles over Uriah's body. Well, this should buy us a bit more time anyway. I agree with Fan. If we could talk to him, I think that's the fairest way. We, we can. We, we can talk to him. I can talk to him. Uh, as Nahara suddenly uh, remembers that she is able to speak with the dead. You have seen her do it before. In fact, when we first got to Barovia. What does uh, Faran have done with Uriah's body? The first thing you all notice is he still looks like he's sleeping with the faint traces of good berry juice down the sides of his cheeks that actually makes it look like he's got a big smile on his face. But you all notice the map on his chest is gone. You wish to commune with him? That's within your power? Yes. Very well. Then I shall uh, forego the preparations of preservation until you have. Um, Nahara kneels beside Uriah. 
and puts her hand over his heart where that map once was. And cast speak with dead. Speak with dead will allow you to ask him five questions. It does not necessarily compel him to answer, nor does it compel truthfulness. Not that Uriah was much one for deception, but you can communicate with him. Uriah, I never want to give up on you, but if we can, do you still want to live? Nara? <laughs> Nara, is that you? Yes. Yes, my so, love. <laughs> it's so cold. Do I... Do I want to live? Yes. Yes. To be with you again, yes. That is one question. You all see Brother Uriah's mouth open, but his eyes don't open. It is an odd approximation of who he was, but it is his voice. Do you have any idea the best way to bring you back? Oh. I would cast a spell and bring any of you back had you fallen, but I do not know of any other follower of Ezra who had been blessed as I was with the power and the knowledge required. Even the high priest back in Rivulus when I was a boy, but he's long gone. Two questions, Nahara. If Ferran can bring, help bring you back with this apparatus that he speaks of, would that be all right? I fear what could happen. But I would risk anything to be by your side again. As would I for you. Two questions remain. <sighs> and Nahara kind of looks around the room at everyone else. Yeah, I think your first question was kind of the only one we really cared about. <sighs> Ask him if he consents to being in the contraption. If you can what? Or if he... Go ahead, Finn. Ask him if he consents to us using the apparatus. And I ask him that question. Oh, yes, yes, if, if that's what it takes to get back to you. <laughs> One question remain. Maybe Valentine should get a chance to know if he really understands what he might come back as. I won't take the last opportunity possibly for a selfish question. If he is choosing to risk this, then I've thought him foolish before and I will again, but. Maybe what he thinks we should do if he doesn't come back as him, Mahara? My love, this is the most difficult question I have for you. Should something go wrong? Should you return not as you were? What would you have me do? Laura. 
if something goes wrong, if I return as one of the wrathful or the hungry dead, I would not harm others. And you must know that that is not me. You must do what is necessary. But as I said, I, I would risk much to be by your side again, but I don't want to risk the lives of innocents. And with that, Uriah stops moving and his mouth closes. Well, there you have it. It is the same decision I would make if I were him. So, we shall make the attempt, but if things go wrong, well, you heard his wishes. Yes. <laughs> and Valentine. Yes. You have my word, if things do go wrong, I will not shirk from my responsibilities. I believe that someone here will do it, sure. I'm just not happy any one of us would have to see it. Then let me spare you that pain, hmm? That horrendous contraption that is against all nature and magic itself. An absolute denial of what is intrinsically given to us, which is so much. Leave someone open in ways even I don't understand having been there. What it left me open to was control, infection of sorts. There's so much more than just coming back as a zombie. And with his existing link to Azalyn, he might be seen as very valuable, not just to us. You speak truth. And yet, the apparatus can have many effects. It can bring life from unlife. I am the quite living example of that. And I'm the unliving kind. So with that in mind, it's on. Brother Uriah chose this. So, of course. I will personally go nowhere near it. But if this goes wrong, if he is left susceptible to something or we end up in a position in which we have to do the unthinkable, you'll die with him. I believe that you might just pull that off. So I will do my very best to ensure that Things don't go awry. On your life. Now then, I will need to accompany you all, but I do have a few irons in the fire. So I'm going to have to, shall we say, split my focus. He picks up a circlet that's on the table and places it on his head. And suddenly there is another Ferran Zalhonen standing beside him who turns to you and speaks. This is a projection and it certainly doesn't have the full scope of my power, but it will be able to complete the task Wait a minute, then how is Valentine going to kill you if it goes wrong, hmm. if you're not really there? Well, I have promised to aid Finn. And as you know, 
I keep my promises. So we will be seeing each other again uh, in the flesh. I'm not mm. worried. Besides, if I have to help Valentine keep that promise, I do have Nepenthe. And she so knows you. evil. So you do. But I can assure you, evil... Aslan is that part of the equation. Mm, I'm sure there's enough Aslan in there for her to do what she needs to do. I understand. Now then, I can offer you what hospitality I can before we set off. There are rooms enough for all of you. Or would you prefer that we immediately set our feet upon the path? Rest might as, be better. As he says this, it's almost simultaneously. Each of you is sort of like, no, we should go right now. But the actual weight of this day does begin to weigh on you in the sense that you've been going nonstop from your battle with the caller straight to Argon Volstold, to ride out to meet Strahd, to finish Strahd, to have just made this trip here. And aside from a very slight nodding on occasion, it has been exhausting. But sorry, uh, Desmond, you were about to, oh, um, were you saying something? Right when he finishes asking, Desmond is just quietly concerned. So he just quietly casts protection from evil on himself. You notice when you cast protection from evil, you feel nothing from Baron. He does not register as evil. In okay. fact, more accurately, the spell is protection from both evil and good. He doesn't register as good either. Hmm. You feel the assorted moral spectrum from your companions that you've become quite accustomed to, but he is almost a blank slate. So, for on. I yes. have a question for you. Yes, of course. You are my guests. I, uh... I've had a day. It's been a long one. I'm tired. In my mind, I wanted to ask Brother Uriah whether or not he trusted you for the task. But I didn't want to waste one of the questions. And the questions that were asked seemed quite fitting. So I quietly to myself casted protection from good and evil. My friends have pinged as they normally do. But from you, I feel nothing. Ah. Why? Well, perhaps you've heard of the path of balance. Many from my world walked it. Some mages thought it the ultimate path to Bokob our god of magic. Uh, you're not familiar with uh, Morden Caden, are you? Quite, quite a prolific crafter of spells. Uh, he was quite a proponent of it, and, well, let's just say Azalin strayed from that path quite heavily. But I am what he was. Desmond and Valentine, both of you give me either history or arcana. The two of you having been particularly well educated. That's a 21. 18. Uh, that is a name that you both have heard, Morden Kanan. Um, alternatively, Desmond, you were raised believing that he was either long dead or perhaps a myth even, but Valentine, your mother with her longer time horizon taught you that he was probably very much alive. Past a certain point, the grips of mortality no longer apply to Archmages. Hmm. 
But that is very much a name from your world, and Ferran Zalhonen is not of your world. I just kind of shoot a look over to Desmond. And I shoot the look back. It's just... Everything I knew of Morton Canaan was a myth and legend. It was no myth, I'll tell you that. As I say, his influence has spread across the plains. Huh. I just kind of look at Valentine again and just... Why? This very abode you dwell in now. Crafted using one of his dreamers. Penned who knows how long ago. And you know he lives? Hmm. If he lives. <laughs> well, some mages turn to the path of lichdom to ensure their immortality. Others seem to simply transcend. I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to comment on his immediate status as I've been trapped in this demiplane for a very, very long time. Mm. What traps you? You can't mm. leave at will? You seem so powerful. Oh, the same thing that traps all who enter the mists. Ah, but I see my use of the term demiplane might be a bit esoteric. Um, these lands. Okay, you don't have to dumb things down for me, Mr. Archmage. Mm. I know what a demi... I, I know what that is. Mm. I've given quite a bit of study to the nature of this place. And yet, its secrets still remain shadowed. Now then, some refreshments, perhaps, and uh, if you like, raise a glass to the hopefully not permanently departed Uriah. Valentine's just going to turn around and just go kind of like find somewhere to meander off to. Valentine, when you sort of wander off on your own, again in this labyrinthine but truly wonderful, dare I say magnificent mansion, you hear Tregrum for the first time in a while. And once again, it's got, it's similar to when you were in... Feywild, and it was like he was speaking to you from some distance. Valentine, um, hmm, sorry, sorry to interrupt your solitude. Um, might I, might I have a brief word? A, a question, really, a, a curiosity, perhaps. Go on. I heard your, your very passionate objections, um, were quite eloquent as you always are um okay the world would be better if more people heeded your supreme wisdom uh, and intelligence um but is is it truly is it truly so is it truly so terrible being one with us being one with one one with me It's a life that some people deserve much better than Tregrim. I, I don't know if it is the, the mystical protections of this place or, or perhaps just how far that you have journeyed, but I, I, I feel myself having an, an opportunity to, to speak uncharacteristically freely, if, if you would allow me. Uh, it seems you that the, the Godbrain's eye does not shine upon this place. Oh, all, all hail the Godbrain. I, I have, I have a sense, a sense of what he has planned for you, and he means it to be something grandiose, but 
not to not to overstep my boundaries but i don't know that the god brains plan however resplendent will necessarily be to your liking if if there were a way for you to perhaps avoid it if if i might assist <laughs> um would you would that be what you desire you would help me yeah yes i you say that you didn't choose this existence i i didn't choose this existence either but i do exist solely to serve and protect you i always assumed that that meant more as an asset of the god brain well i <laughs> You, you are, of course, insightful as always. Um, but I, I, I don't. Until very recently, at least to me, there was no contradiction between serving and protecting you as an implement of the God Brain, as I am, all hail the God Brain, um, and serving and protecting you as a friend. Thank you, Dragon. Yes, that would be of interest to me. And I know that we have had a tumultuous roommate situation here for the entirety of it. But the pains of being in between do not come from you. I have learned from our previous interactions when I should stop talking. So I will only say thank you, Valentine, and I am, as always, at your service. Tregramite, I think I'd like you a lot better if you spoke freely more often. <laughs> I think I would like myself more if I spoke freely more often as well. <laughs> thank you, Valentine. I consider Uriah having been a friend to both of us, so I wish you the best in your process as well. As Ron again displays a sumptuous banquet, the likes of which he did the first time you all were here, all manner of food, which Tatiana, you recall, while delicious and very filling, will not go with you out of this place. As we know before, not all of you have an appetite, even in the best of times, and I believe even if she had one, Nahara's might be missing from her currently. Where does Nahara go in this place, if anywhere, as everyone else is eating? Nahara would have taken Uriah to some area that was a little quieter and would stay by his side. And trying to listen for any voice of guidance from anyone that would help. Except for Aslan. Strangely, I don't think he can see into this place. Uh, for Ron, would it be um, presumptuous to assume that uh, there might be a floating disc available uh, to shepherd Uriah through here while he's inside? I don't, I don't think so. No, there would, there would definitely be several if needed. Ron, as you see, Valentine goes off in one direction, Nahara in another. You, of course, have an intrinsic sense of this place and who is where doing what, as always. What is Ferran doing? Ferran will actually, having seen Nahara take Uriah off, will softly rap at the door. I hope I might intrude for a moment, Nahara. It's all right, yes. The 
must have been terrible. It's the worst possible pain one could ever imagine. Again, my sorrows for your loss. We will do our best to return him to you. I truly hope you mean that. Nahara, this is slightly unsettling, especially as you're getting this opportunity to talk to him quietly because he has Uriah's face. Slightly older, a few more lines, a dash of gray. But it's the same face. Not wholly unlike how Tatiana had your face. It is almost the exact inversion. Arena, sorry. Arena had your face. I know how much... I know how much you meant to him. I... If I could trade places with him right now, I would. Mm. He, he, would have... he would not want that, that much I know. It would be the last thing he would ever want. But the world would be such a much better place with him in it. With him in it, destroyed by grief, shattered by heartbreak. I'm not sure that's true. I think he would have given anything to keep you safe. And in a sense, he did. But it was you who struck down Strad von Zarevich. Yes. And that, that is a monumental accomplishment. You know, I, ever since I found out about the part of my life with him in it, I wish nothing more than to see him destroyed. And I often thought how glorious it would feel to see him take his last breath. And I feel nothing, nothing for that, nothing for him. <laughs> because I did not know the price I would pay. This place, these lands, they often demand a price. <laughs> I sometimes think Whatever dark powers watch over this place. I think they have built it as an engine for suffering and for fear and for torment. But I do know that there are good people in these lands and Uriah was one of them and I swear to you, I shall do my utmost to return him to you. Thank you. I will admit I did not understand and why you had sent the caller out. And I did not. I didn't want to believe that you had any guilt. I did not say I did not have guilt. I have done things, things that I know Uriah would have shied away from, but I did them because they're necessary. But I am very glad that he survived and I am very glad the two of you met.
my biggest fear is that none of this will work. Do you remember your last question to Uriah? Yes. Yes. It's... If things go wrong, you must be resolute. You must honor his wishes. I know. I know. It's just having seen the life fall from his body once is more than I can bear. I don't know if I can see it twice. We will do what we can. And here, having gotten your fill, your supplies replenished, even gotten in a bit of rest, the time comes that it is time to depart from this place. Baron Zalhonen, you and your duplicate standing there, which way do you direct them? Come then. There's no need for us to trek endlessly along a road, not in this house. For many of these doors lead to other domains, and Lamordia is one. The real him sits down in a chair and observes as the duplicate leads you over to a door. This one. As you open the door and all of you step outside, you are greeted with a bitter but familiar cold. An icy chill cuts through each of you as the wind of Lamordia goes blowing by. And up on a nearby tree branch, there is an odd squirrel with a patchwork of scars all over its body. And a bird flies by with mismatched wings. And a really realization comes upon each of you. You've seen this before. You've been here before. The wind blows through and the icy fog dissipates slightly and you see it. You see the carnival parked exactly where it was when you departed on the outskirts of Lamordia. And that is a good place for us to stop.